We, we have been talking about the mountains. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, mountains. And we have discovered that all of us have mountains. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, even you, you have a mountain. Now, some of these mountains are bigger than others, right? And uh, some of the obstacles and um, resistances that we get, those are mountains. And they are all over the place. We have resistance wherever we find ourselves. But there is a promise, and we saw the promise in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. If you start with verse number, um, should be verse number 10. Uh, let's read verse number 10 to verse number uh, 15. If somebody can do that for us in a little while. Verse 10 to verse number 15. This is what the Bible says. So do not fear. This is God speaking. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Because you can have fear or you can be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I, the word, I think the word that is critical is help. I will not only strengthen you, but I will also help you. And I will help you because I will uphold you. I will lift you up with my righteous right hand. Verse number 11. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and they will perish. It is not just nothing, but God will cause them to perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. God is going to deal with my enemies and your enemies. You will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. God is the one speaking. He's saying what he is going to do. Why? Because, uh, verse number 13, For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. Again, he says the same word, I will help you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God wants to help you. Verse number 14, do not be afraid, you warm Jacob, little Israel. Do not fear, for I myself, again the same word comes back, I will help you, declares the Lord. You are redeemer, the holy one of Israel. Verse number 15, see, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. Now that is the promise of God. Three times he repeats, I will help you. Or if there is anything that I love about this God of ours, is that he promises and he does. He says he will and he does. He says he will help me. And he will help you. We are talking about mountains that are, sometimes they, they appear like But those mountains at 2023 refuse to move. We want to believe God that this year, 2024, they are not only going to move, we, we, we agree with what God has told us, that he will crush them. He is going to help us to do some business over those. And our enemies will not be there. We will look for them, but we will not find them. Why? Because the Lord is the one who declares that he's going to help me. Verse number 23 of Mark chapter 11. Verse 23 of Mark chapter number 11. Or Mark 11 verse 23. God has an answer to all of us. He says this to you. If anyone says to this mountain. Go throw yourself into the sea. Yani, uangalia mulima, uambie wewe mulima. Wewe wende, ujitupe. Go throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, then it will be done for them. Truly I say unto you, truly I say unto you, it's God who is saying, I'm telling you the truth. Yani ni kama mungu wakisema, drakwira ma, ma, ma. You know, I'm telling you the truth. And you know God does not lie. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God does not lie. You see, what he says he will do, it might not appear like it's happening, but if he has said it, 
you can go to the bank. It will come to pass in the name of the Lord. If anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea, and does no doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done to them. But you see, when we read that scripture, we have many questions. Because some of us, uh, you know, we are diplomats. Now, how, how am I going? The idea is there is a mountain. But that mountain, you have to speak to it. But then the question is, how can I speak to a mountain and it does not respond? On, on, uh, fr on Friday, was it Friday? No, Thursday. We visited uh, a relative on Thursday in the evening. Uh, their son, uh, the small son, was talking to a toy. And you'd hear deep conversation. So we are asking the child, who are you talking to? And the boy would respond, Gugu. I'm talking to Gugu. He has a toy that he has called it Gugu. And the conversation was deep conversation. And you try to push Gugu's hand and try to wrestle Gugu. And he was communicating with Gugu. Now that child believes Gugu can respond. He also believes Gugu responds. That's why he has a deep conversation with Gugu. Now when an adult person like you is asked to speak to a mountain, the question is, how will people think about me? Can you imagine you are talking to a mountain and people are passing by? They are wondering, is this guy crazy? Are you insane? Who are you talking to? I'm a, I don't know whether you have heard yourself saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. It's like you are agreeing to some conversation, and then if you have a spouse next to you, they ask, Muralia now, who are you talking to? And then you tell your spouse, I'm in deep conversation with a guy called Jimmy. I'm in deep conversation, and it is me talking to myself. Does not believe me. So I have to keep on reminding Jimmy so that Jimmy can believe me. Deep conversation with yourself. You are not crazy. You are only telling Jimmy. You have to hearken to the voice of God or this is going to happen. So many times I have found myself agreeing, rebuking, refusing. But my wife would ask me, who are you conversing? Why don't you talk to me? And I say, this conversation has nothing to do with you and me. This conversation has to do with me. So the question that sometimes we ask when God is saying, let's talk to this mountain, is how am I going to address a mountain? How am I going to talk to this hill? How am I going to speak to this situation? But the Bible is so true there it is. Verse 23, saying that we, have, we can speak to it. So what are we going to do with this kind of a text? Are we going to take it out of the Bible? So our first inclination is to explain it or sometimes to say, no, 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 God, I, I know you have gotten yourself into this now. I think God, have you ever gotten yourself to that position? You see, in a church like ours, the pastors preach this sermon and when the, a couple went home, their son wanted to use the same scripture because there were so many mountains in the house. Some of the mountains he wanted to change were the toys. He wanted to change some of the pictures. He wanted to, to, to relocate some of them. So he, he started telling them to go out. Where hammer? Where enda huko? Na wewe rudi huko? Na wewe pangwa pale? The father says, no, 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 my son. It is, that's not what the preacher said. But the, the young man says, no, 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 this is what the preacher, the preacher says, if I have faith. In other words, the child had more faith than the mother and the father. Why was the father trying to, to try to let the child get so spiritual? It's because sometimes we are embarrassed that it is not going to happen. And don't look at me like uh, you have never even told yourself, hii ni akiroho, hii mulima, Sio mulima hii ya kawaita, ni mulima ya kiroho. Mulima ya dhambi ya kiroho. Mulima ya kiroho. But you see, 
the Lord, if you look at Mark chapter 11, verse number 1, it, it, where they are, it is possible that the Lord was speaking to his disciples with the idea of the mountain that was there, Mount Olive that was there. So he's not talking just about anything. He's, just, he's telling them, you guys, you can tell this Mount Olive be relocated and go to Mediterranean Sea. That's what he was trying to tell them. Tell this mountain, go to Mediterranean Sea and it will go. So in other words, it, it is, that is what he's telling Peter. And Peter, in their conversation, they have some, they, they are not doubting, but they are not also not agreeing, but they are there. They are in a limbo of a kind. But the Lord is telling them, speak to this. See, speak to this. So I invite you so that we get, we get a little journey together so that we can see the Bible and how the Bible explains with us so we can see and discover what Jesus is saying to us because Jesus is saying something to us. In Mark chapter 11 verse 22, Mark 11 verse 22. Now this, these guys have just come and they have seen what God, what the tree that Jesus rebuked has happened. It has dried up to the root. So they are having some conversation within themselves and Jesus wants to help them. He tells them, have faith in God. This is an answer to their challenge because they saw the trees withered and they have conversation and they are telling the Lord, you see, it has withered. But Jesus is telling them, all what you need is to have faith in God. How simple this is. Four words, have faith in God. Tell your neighbor, have faith in God. It is four words, have faith in God, yet how revolutionary they are. Revolutionary are they are. Because God is. God is. And we need to know that in all the things that we read in the scripture and what we believe, it is when we believe that God is. God is. God is. If we handle what God is, if we believe who God is, if we trust what God says, then your life and my life will be different. If you don't waver, because I think the biggest problem, we waver and immediately doesn't happen, we want to put it into a spiritual explanation. Either God is or God is not. Uh, say hi to your neighbor. Uh, na neighbor, either God is or he is not. You see, that is the, the, the conversation in the Bible. We are either going to worship God or we are going to worship Baal. It's either God or God is not. And the Bible says if you are not warm and or cold and you are not hot and you are there warm, warmish thing will be thrown out. Either God is or he isn't. Either God is or he isn't. But if he is, then that changes everything. That changes everything. The voice from the burning bush told Moses to tell the people that I am has sent you. Exodus 3.14. What does that mean? The only further explanation is that I am that I am, which points that God's eternal existence if you know that God is and that he is the great I am, then you have known the most fundamental truth in the whole universe. If you know that God is who says he is, then you have known some great revelation about God because it is foundational, it is fundamental truth in the universe. The book of Psalms 81 and verse number 10 God gives a wonderful invitation to his children. He says this, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. Now if I saw you opening your mouth, again I would think you are insane. But I'm opening my mouth so that I will not speak unless God tells me what to speak. So open wide your mouth and I will feel it. That's an invitation. Ask what you need, God says, and I will do it for you. That's what it all means. If I open up my mouth, it's like God will feel it. And what he's feeling it is, 
ask what you need, and I will do it for you. In the book of Jeremiah, 33 and verse 3, God's telephone number, call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. The telephone number for God is to call him. Call him. But you have to know him. Know that he is. What he says he is, then he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, I have heard of people, and you and I pray, Lord, teach me to pray big prayers. Big prayers. And I, I'm, I'm not fighting with prayers, but I think sometimes you and I get caught up in praying in King James. You, you are so concerned about the grammar. Almost telling the Lord, I'm sorry I pronounced it wrongly. Can I do it again? Yeah, and you are praying with, with a lot of details. I'm not saying the details are bad. But I'm saying sometimes we miss it. Because what is thinking is this thing. This thing that is called the head. And it can bother you. <laughs> you know, I, I, our late uh, counselor, Kinoti, you, you used to tell me that he has discovered that God understands Kimeru better than English. Oh, Murungu. You know, you, 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 go, you go vernacular. The advantage of vernacular is that we don't say sorry when we miss it. Because many times we don't miss it. But God, as I pray, he, he is not so worried about the details. But I also find that there is some helpful and challenging thought of praying a big prayer. It is not that details don't matter. They do. But sometimes our prayers suffer because our vision is too small. If we want to honor God then, we will believe what he says. Then we will act on that belief by praying large prayers that require the almighty God to answer them. Yani utaomba maombi hata we mwenyewe utajishuku. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Utajishuku. During some drought in, in England, the church was praying for rain. And as they prayed for rain, one lady came to church with an umbrella. And even the pastor was asking, Where? And the lady told the pastor, We are praying for rain. And with rain, you need an umbrella. As the service was going on, thunder, clouds gathered. There was thunderstorm out and rain poured. The only person who went home dry was that lady who came with an umbrella. That means if I am praying for rain, I need to have an umbrella. Because if I don't carry an umbrella, I'm saying, Lord, bring rain. So you nikama unaomba na una cancel. It is, Lord, give me increase. But if God is going to give me increase, then I have to do something on, I have to do something. I have to plant for increase. So this lady was dry. Well, the congregation went home wet. That is what faith does. It brings an umbrella to a prayer meeting. When we are praying for rain, it brings a number. That's what faith does. It brings a number to the prayer meeting. 
higher. Simungu ni the best. We go back to the scripture we read. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but he believes that what he says, not what God says, but what he says will happen. It will be done for him. Bringing an umbrella to a prayer meeting when he's praying for rain. That's what it simply means. In one sense, Jesus is trying to explain the possibilities of prayer. The words are literal when he says this mountain, meaning your mountain, my mountain. And as I said earlier, he was standing or perhaps pointing Mount Olive. A literal mountain. The disciples had traversed many times. They had gone through that mountain many times. That particular mountain might be cast into the sea. That is what he's telling them. He's not in telling them to cast it, but he's telling them even this kind of a mountain. You can cast it into the sea. Peter, you can do this. That's what he's telling Peter. And I'm saying the Peters in the church today, you can do it. You can take the Mount of Olives and cast it into Mediterranean Sea. That, that's, that's the meaning. You can. But it kept, Peter couldn't do it. Neither could James or John or neither of their pastors, apostles. For them, it was a total impossibility. But it was not impossible with God. I'm talking to people who see their problems and mountains as impossible. True, they are impossible with you, but they are not impossible with God. Is he God? Is he God? Then if he is God, then what is impossible with me? Because it is possible with God, I will go with God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is impossible with me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the hardest part is talking to the mountain. I want to say that again. Your hardest part is becoming crazy and talking to your mountain. A couple of years ago, when the church was small, there was a lady that was here with her son. The husband was working in UK, was going to school in UK, and one, son, one day she wakes up and there is no food in her house. Then she hears a voice telling her to go to Uchumi. Oh, sorry. Kulikuwa na supermarket, kulikuwa inaitwa Uchumi. It's good to, to explain. And it was huge. And there was one in a kind of walk. So the, the direction was clear. Go to Uchumi Agakani walk. Go inside and take everything you need. Not any Uchumi, but Uchumi Agakani walk. And the lady asked, Lord, Sinta, Sinta kwa nimefanya maajabu, Sina pesa. But then, she remembered that voice, si yake, yuniamungu. So she prepared herself and went to Uchumi Agakani walk. She took a trolley and she heard the voice, ikiraido iria shio the, we navatana shio. So she, would, she put two ungas and she was trying to get out. Then the voice says, go back. Jazai trolley. So she filled the trolley, but every time she would try to go to the counter, she would feel like a voice. And the voice is saying, Go to the counter. Go. Now, have you picked everything? Feel it. So after she filled the whole thing, the minute she got to the counter, Somebody walked running and said, Mama so and so, I've been looking for you and I heard the Lord tell me you are here. An envelope, pop. 
When she paid the envelope, carried the money, the total money for what she was carrying. Now that is the God that I'm talking about. Kama kuna mungu anaweza mwambia huyo mama atoke githurai, aende Nairobi, aingie ya gakani woku chumi, achukue chakula, ili ya muunganishe na muujiza wake. Nasema hapa kuna watu lazima tumjue mungu. There is a mountain before you, but your biggest problem is you don't want to speak to your mountain. Si useme ni meokoka. Ni meokoka. I will speak to my mountain. It doesn't matter how it is. I'm going to address it. We must talk to the mountain. Number two, the other hardest thing is to kick doubt in your heart. If God has said it, then it is going to happen. So that is the hardest part of casting our mountain in the sea. Most people would probably either have no faith or are doubting in their heart. I submit to you the hardest part is having the courage to come from Gedurai to get to Chumi Agakani walk and pick what God has said and then start going out because your miracle is on the counter. It is not when you are afraid going around there. It is when you say, Sasa ni kuto. Kiumane, kiumane. Umeniambia ni toke, ni tatoka. I know the voice. The voice wa mini. Wewe mama leo ndi utaona. Nita kuwaibisha, satani anasema. Now, sauti nasema, mingine nasema, toka. Which voice am I going to hear? Voice ya kuwa embarrassed ama voice ya kutoka. Me, I'm going to hear the voice that says toka because there is no way that God can embarrass me. He is a good God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God honors those who dare to say out loud what they are asking God to do. You know, I want the church and I want you to try God. Be crazy about these things. I know we have talked about, about God answering our prayers. And we have talked about Bishop Mark teaching people to talk to the mountain and to talk to things because they have ears. Anything that has a name has ears. But I don't know whether you have tried it yourself. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your mountain. God is looking for people that will speak loud what they are asking God to do. Now, again, sasa hapa nikikuambia usimame, useme mulima wako, hauta sema. Mkristo wa mungu, unafiki mwingi, na ungwana. Sini kuhubirie tu leo ni kuambie, wacha ungwana. If you want God to deal with your mountain, it does not matter what your neighbor thinks. If it is hurting, it is hurting. And ukitaka mwi, ukitaka wata, ire, ire ihoha, inaitago ihoha, ire boil, ukitaka kupona, ita mtu wa mungu, either akufinye na akushike, paka itoke. Nilikuwa na moja nikaenda kwa daktari rafiki yangu, wakana ambia weo sijali hapa. Kaa chini, na usiinuke. Ya. Usiinuke. Ya. Haka ikata. I see. Kasikia ka uchungu lakini haka ifinya. Kanambia sasa paka hii powder. Enda nyumbani. I'm talking to Christians that are looking at me. The difference between those that God has answered their prayers is because they have not been embarrassed by their mountain. If I have a child out of wedlock, God knows, even if my friend does not know, and it doesn't matter. So if it is hurting me, I want to tell God about it. Yeah. If I'm suffering from pornography, I will declare it. It doesn't matter. Because you see, I want to deal with my mountain. I will speak to it. Usiku, mchana, nikienda barabarani. The same thing is true. 
if I believe that God is going to help me, I will speak it in the morning, in the evening, in the matatu. I will keep on saying, God will help me. What do you say? You say, what do you say? You say, God will help me. Why do you say that? Watch. I say, God will help me. And you... Oh, religious. Religious. Wonderful people. What wa mungu? If God is going to help you this year of crushing the mountain, one of the things that you have to do is to gather courage and speak to that mountain. Ime kusumbua miaka mingi. Inuka. Na uwe uingie dini ya tukutendresa. Uwache dini ya deliverance. Eh, tukutendresa. Hili mulima yote unahitaja vile ilivyo. Yaani hauna dhoni. Eh, hii kama ni dhambi unahitaja vile ilivyo na unaitangaza. Hili ukitoka pale unatoka ukiwa huru Mungu amekusamehea. Ah. Oh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know when you start preaching is when time goes very fast. So this is where God is leading us, leading us to a place where we will not only believe, but we will talk about it. We will talk about it. That we will talk about it. We will talk about it. We will talk about it. Na njini mmekua na mimi kwa mda mrefu. You know I talk about it. Tunazungumza habari ya mapesa, na mungu wa natupeaga mapesa. But we speak to it. We have to speak to it. Iyo mlima, tuizungumzie. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. Hata kama ni ugonjwa, tuuzungumzie ule ugonjwa. Ili mungu aachilie nguvu zake, katika njia zake, ili alete uponyo wake, katika njia zake. Let's not keep silent about our dreams. Let's talk about them. I know there are people who say, stika kualia mono 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 mudo hata wogoteria. Teria me, but I will still speak about it. Teria me, I will have another one. Kwani? Yusufu, Si aliongea, nani alimuteria? Finally, he became what God wanted him to be. After all, speak it. Oh yeah. You see, faith is believing in advance, in something that will only seem logical when seen in reverse. God calls us to believe him for things that humanly speaking make no sense. Like speaking to mountains makes no sense. But I will speak to my mountain. I will speak to my... Let me say again. A mountain is anything that causes you to have sleepless nights. Or when you are thinking about it, you are sweating. Ease of it too. Those sleepless nights. Whether it is your children or your future, speak to that mountain. We have many mountains of difficulty in our lives. Sometimes there are tasks that are laid before us. And we have little personal strength to meet them. Sometimes those mountains are broken relationships or habits of sin. Your mountain may involve believing God regarding a health issue or of a loved one or yourself. That person could be far from the Lord, but you are facing that mountain, meaning you're trusting God over that situation. Some of you could be Trusting God of a failing marriage. It is a mountain. One major part of seeing the mountain move in your life is having the courage to speak to the mountain because you believe God can cast it into the sea. Talk to your mountain. Talk to your mountain. Therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. The promise, that promise has three parts. And it, the first one, it is comprehensive. Whatever you ask, anything, ask for the moon, ask for, be extravagant, ask, ask. It is comprehensive. Number two, it is conditional. Believe that you have it. The condition is that for me to believe, I have it. Thirdly, it is definite. I, it will be yours. Definite, it is going to be yours. Not ours. 
It's also good for us to note that there are changes of tenses there. There is the present tense. Whatever you ask for, present. Whatever you're asking for, present. And there is also the past. You have received it. In other words, what I'm receiving today is already settled in God. I'm not shaking him. He already has it for me. And then the future, it will be yours. There is also a promise for the future. So present, whatever I ask, past, you have received it, future, it will be yours. God answers even before we ask. And it is like, it is like this. Parents, parents, before Christmas, we buy gifts to our children, don't we? We keep it somewhere because if you give them too early, then the Christmas will have no meaning. But then on the Christmas day or the boxing day, they call it, you release the gifts and therefore the child becomes so happy. Oh, he is so thrilled. And I have a word for you. There is a father in heaven. His closet has your gifts. His closet has your gift. I might not have it now, but because he can see Christmas is coming, he's already prepared it for me. He can see my future already. It is prepared for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Say it aloud. Speak it forth. Hallelujah. My father wants me to have it because he has already has it. It is in his closet. All what I need is to say it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wonderful. So what are we saying? We are saying this. You, listening to Bishop Jimmy Kimani today, the 12th. Thank you. It's 14, eh? When did I read you more? I Friday. Okay, 14th. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you five things. I'm trying to tell you, when you are praying, be definite. Deal with your mountain. Watch a mountain zetu. Yako. Deal with it. Two, I'm also saying, be loud about it. The beautifier, the lady that we attended her wedding. She started saying she's getting married. She did. She made it loud. Some of you, nisiri siri, tangaza musimamo. Wacha watu wakuangalie, waseme video watasema. Wacha waseme. Kwani wakisema? Si utenda na ulale. Wekito watasema, uu uwe ni muzee sana. Uu kweli anasa olewa. That is the none of your business. Your business is to speak it loud. Oh, I can see some people want to speak loud. Speak it loud. Hata wea usikie. Uongea kama watoto wakua pre-unit. Wanapiga kakerele, kakiongea kana piga sauti, unashindwa. Kwa nini anapiga sauti? Ni kwa sababu hata ya nataka kusikia vile ya mesema. Iyo kingereza ya mesema, haisikie. Na wea zungumza usikie. Tatu, Don't question God's ability. Know that he is. Ujue yeye, akisema amesema. Fourthly, persevere in prayer. Push, stay there. What am I saying? I'm saying then you wait for God's answer because God always answers believing prayer. So when you pray, we believe. So let the people of God keep on praying and claim God's promises. Say to this mountain, be cast. Then stand back and see what the Lord will do. There is a mountain before you. I want you to speak to it. Can we all arise in a minute or two, please? I want you to and, uh, tell your neighbor, neighbor, ata ukisikia ushangae, iyo ni mlima yangu. Kwa sababu nataka useme. Usiniangalie hivi na usivunge mdomo wako. Ni watu wangapi wako na milima hapa? 
na milima iko ya yeah, milima iko sasa mwambie jirani yako yangu ukisikia ni kwa sababu usemi yako unasikia ukifanya nini actually why why are they hearing you us that maybe they are not saying anything hallelujah whoa actually what i want us to do is not to pray is to shout that mountain najua wengine muko na twingi tu mlima twingi hata uto tuote tutaja taja taja chote lakini utaja taja upesi kwa sababu tunataka tu shout mara moja the walls of jericho are coming down are you ready you have your mountain do some practice within yourself unaijua ndio hiyo ndio hiyo ndio hiyo ndio hiyo ndio hiyo ndio hiyo hallelujah oh this church today we are going to have na wewe utakuwa na ushuhuda wewe mwaka huu we utakuwa na ushuhuda na utaniambia mwaka huu hallelujah we want to speak to that mountain so when i say to account of three account of three uitaje na kama kuna jirani atasikia ujue yeye hakusema ni kwa sababu yeye hakusema ndio amesikia na kashanga hati hallelujah wow wow so one Two, three, billion! Hey! Let's say it one more time. Let's shout to that mountain of yours. I did not hear yours because I was shouting mine. Hallelujah. So one, two, three, cut cases! Our heavenly father we have spoken to our mountain may we walk in freedom in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for speaking to us today for we pray all this in Jesus name and everybody say amen let's give the lord praise in the house shall we let's appreciate him